G'day cocktail lovers, welcome back. Uh, I'm glad you could be with me again. I am doing another taste test with expensive bourbons versus uh, common everyday bourbon to see if I can tell the difference. Because I'd always been of the mind that it didn't matter if you used uh, cheaper regular ingredients or more expensive ingredients in cocktails, because I, I thought you couldn't tell the difference. That was a lie because I was able to tell the difference between the cheaper Jim Beam uh, bourbon and the more expensive Jim Beam small batch and overproof. Uh, and I did think the more expensive ones were better. And that was in a Manhattan, which is a classic and quite simple drink. And because in the little gift pack I got, there were two more to go. Um, this is a Baker's seven year aged bourbon, 55% uh, alcohol. So that's an overproof um, bourbon. And this one, Basil Hayden's Kentucky Street Bourbon Whiskey, that's aged eight years. It's just 40% bourbon. And they've got the standard Jim Beam, uh, which according to the website is aged four years, um, also 40%. So I thought maybe if I make a more complex cocktail, then uh, the flavor profile of the bourbons wouldn't be as noticeable. We'll see. Once again, I will be getting Mrs. Angry to help me with a blind taste test after I make them. Uh, but first, I have to make them. Now, the cocktail I'm going to make, I'm adapting a little a recipe I saw that was called apples to oranges. Uh, it said to use uh, Calvados, which is French apple brandy, which I don't have, but I have American Applejack apple brandy, so I'm using that. Uh, and it said to use uh, an orange liqueur like uh, Grand Marnier. Uh, I have a few orange liqueurs. Uh, I'm going to use a blood orange liqueur called Salerno from Italy uh, and vermouth and bourbon uh, and I'm going to use an Australian vermouth and that gives me the excuse to make it a very Aussie named uh, with the blood orange. Uh, I'm calling this an apples to bloody oranges um, because it's got to have that Aussie vibe in it. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, make the first cocktail. This is a fairly simple recipe, uh, starting off with uh, one shot, one ounce, 30 mils of uh, bourbon from the really stylish, enormous bottle from Costco. And that's too much. Ah, oh, well. A little bit more. Yep, that's about right. Okay. Woo! Okay, this is a mixed drink. So I've got my mixing glass with a couple of blocks of ice in here and I'll chuck the bourbon in and along with the rest of the ingredients. There's also one ounce of the apple brandy. I'll be a bit calmer pouring uh, to avoid an overpour this time. Now we have three quarters of an ounce of vermouth. Uh, to your taste, the recipe said extra dry, which actually isn't to my taste. This is a medium, uh, they call it the classic. I've discovered this uh, make of vermouth recently. It's an Australian vermouth. Made and I, uh, they make a few. I've seen uh, they do sweet, classic, and dry. I had the sweet, I finished the sweet, uh, so I'm trying the classic for something different. So I'll be three quarters of an ounce of the vermouth, and we're doing half an ounce of the orange liqueur. Like I said, I'm using this blood orange liqueur called Salerno, but you could use uh, Grand Marnier, Triple Sec, Cointreau. Uh, Curacao, any of the orange liqueurs, there's a lot of them out there. Um, they all have got to add something slightly different to the drink. I thought uh, for a bit of a spin, I'd try the blood orange. And that's all there is. Uh, no juices, uh, nothing else, no syrups added. So we just give that a bit of a stir. Get it nice and chilled, a little bit of dilution happening. And we strain that into a chilled glass. I'm using a coupe, but you know, really, use whatever you have on hand. Don't get too bogged down in details like that. I've made the same cocktail now with standard Jim Beam, uh, seven year old overproof bourbon and an eight year old 80 proof bourbon. Theoretically, uh, those are the better tasting ones. They're the much more expensive ones, but we'll see now I've put them in a more complex drink, uh, whether or not I can taste the difference and which one I think tastes best. But this is going to be a blind test, and I'm not quite blind when I take off my glasses. So the zombie eyes go on. All right, and so now my lovely assistant is going to put a drink in my hand. And I am going to taste it. Okay. That initial thing where I worry that I'm not going to find my mouth. Uh... Mm. 
It's a very nice fruity drink. I, I've never made or tasted this drink before. Uh, it is the, the apple and blood orange. Uh, it makes it very nice and fruity. As does the grape flavors from uh, the vermouth. Hmm, okay. Is that one? And now I want to try the third one. And uh, then I have to see if I can work out which is which. Okay. <sighs> okay, I think I know. I think this is the overproof one, the seven year old one. Am I right? You are right. I'm right. And I think the second one was the standard Jim Beam. Yeah. And the first one was therefore the eight year old one. Huzzah! He's done it again! Now, I want to taste them again so I can decide which one I think actually tastes better. Um, on, okay, could, could, could you pass me the eight year old one? Because I, I could tell the Jim Beam. Again, none of these are bad. I want to stress the Jim Beam is not bad. But I could tell that that was the cheaper bourbon. So this is the eight year old. It is definitely smoother and sweeter. Oh my God. You could, oh my God. You can tell the extra alcohol from the overproof. So I'm going to say more or less what I said last, although I actually don't know which of these is more expensive. Overproof uh, whiskies tend, overproof spirits generally tend to be much more expensive. That's actually a tax thing. Uh, the eight year old is definitely smoother, um, would be my preference. But again, if you are a mad bourbon drinker, if you want something with a bit of kick, uh, you get a better kick out of, and this is not hugely overproof. This is only 55%, and um, some overproof bourbons will be 70% and more. Um, but it's really noticeable. I mean, I suppose 55 is a kick up from 40%. Um, but if you want, if you want a really serious bourbon taste, you'd probably like it with the overproof. Uh, if you're less hardcore into the whiskies. The, the more aged one is um, smooth and sweeter. The standard Jim Beam is, is quite nice. Mrs. Angry is not a big uh, bourbon drinker. Um, your verdict? What do you think of that one? Mm. Mrs. Mrs. Angry is comparing the eight year old and the standard Jim Beam. Oh, just the same to me. Yeah. And that's the thing, if you're not a whiskey drinker, they're just going to taste the same. And again, someone who's more, far more heavily into whiskey than me would have a lot more to say about this. But as, as a bit of a, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I'm not at all a whiskey expert. Um, you can definitely tell the difference between the standard bourbon and a more expensive, uh, longer aged one. You can really tell the difference with overproof ones. Uh, so it's gonna come down to your taste really. Um, bit of a winning experiment in my opinion. But again, it puts the lie to me saying what I always said, why well, get a more expensive ingredient? It all tastes the same when you mix it. It really doesn't. Uh, uh, I, that's con I've confirmed it with science. Um, can, can you pass me the standard Jim Beam one again? Cause I haven't tasted that for a little while. And, uh, Gotta pose for a double fisting thumbnail because that's my thing. Um, yeah, this is not as complex a taste as the more aged whiskies. It's it's not bad, um, but the others are definitely better. Um, uh, so yes, I may become a whiskey snob yet. Who knows? Um, look, I hope you enjoyed that comparison. It's been interesting to me to actually conduct this as an experiment because like I said, I've, I've always said, ah, oh, more expensive uh, ingredients aren't better. They kind of are. Like the bourbon I used, uh, uh, not the bourbon, the vermouth I used in this. It's 
three times more than what you have to pay to get a bottle of vermouth. There are some very cheap vermouths on the market. It's worth it. It's just so much better. Um, and also, I'm supporting an Australian distributor uh, with uh, Made and Made and I. I'm not exactly sure how they pronounce that. Uh, it is a nice beverage. These are all overall nice beverages. And I guess I know what I'm doing for the rest of the night. I hope you're looking after yourself soon. Hope to see you again soon. Uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Ring the bell for notifications. Uh, let me know uh, what your preferred uh, bourbons or whiskies generally are. If you've tried a similar experiment or go out and try it and tell me about it. Um, and do the old thumbs up. Uh, tell your friends uh, that uh, they should come and subscribe too. How desperate can I sound? I could probably keep going. I'll leave it there. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.